welcome back to another video on applying to medical school in the UK. This video is about the entrance exams, the UK CAT and the BMAT. Now, different universities have different requirements in terms of these exams. So the first thing you'd want to do is find out which universities require the UK CAT, which universities require the BMAT and which don't need any. This is likely to change yearly, so it's a good idea to check a reliable and updated source, like a university website. First, let's talk about the UK CAT. Now, the UK CAT is an online test that can happen any time between June 1st and October 4th. You get to choose your own date. From my experience, I would say it requires a lot of preparation. It doesn't test scientific knowledge, it only tests aptitude. And time management is key in the UK CAT. Like, if the UK CAT was a lock, and time management was a key. I opened the lock with the key. Time management is key. Now there are five sections. Verbal reasoning, abstract reasoning. Oh my god, I forgot. What? <laughs> there are five sections. Verbal reasoning, abstract reasoning, quantitative reasoning, decision analysis, and situational judgment. I know they all sound really vague and scary, but by the time you've done enough questions, I promise you, they become a little less vague and scary. Just a bit. The best way to prepare for the UK CAT is to start off with books. There's one book that everyone swears by. It's the ISC Publications Get Into Medical School 600 Practice Questions book. I use that book along with another book called How to Master the UK CAT 600 Plus Practice Questions published by Conan Page. Now, these books didn't have any situational judgement questions in them because it was a fairly new subtest. But I'm sure in the near future, a lot of other more relevant books will be coming out which do have situational judgement questions in them. Now, my advice would be to solve all the questions of whichever books you're using to get an idea of the kind of questions that come in the exam. Then, when you're a little more confident with the questions from the book and your exam is approaching, you should start doing online practice. Now, I use a site called Medify, that's www.medify.co.uk, which gives you a large volume of questions for quite a reasonable price. The reason why I suggest online practice is because it gets you familiar with the format of the exam, because the exam is on the computer, and also the questions are a lot more relevant and up-to-date than those that you find in the books. Another popular course is the Kaplan course, which is a lot more expensive than Medify, but is a useful tool that has helped a lot of people. In my opinion, if you use a combination of good books and Medify, and use them wisely, it can be enough to get you where you want to go. Do note that it takes a lot, a lot of preparation, so if you know that your exam is in the first week of August, don't wait till the last week of July to start preparing. Maybe start doing a few questions from each subtest after your AS exams end every week and then start doing a certain number of questions every day so that you can finish the book and then you should leave yourself about three weeks of online practice and intense sort of preparation before your exam. Okay, that was a lot of information and that was just one test. Moving on to the BMAT. The BMAT is the entrance exam used for, but not limited to, universities such as Imperial, UCL, Lancaster, Leeds, Brighton and Sussex, and, of course, Oxford and Cambridge. Now, I didn't give the BMAT, but essentially how it differs from UK CAT is that it's not an online test, it's a pen and paper test that happens after you submit your application. It happens around November 4th every year, and results aren't immediate, they're given to you at the end of November. Whereas in the UK CAT, you get your results right after you give the exam. Like, you literally just give the exam, you walk out, they hand you the results. Done and dusted. So, why would anyone want to give an exam that's essentially a risk? Because you don't know how well you're going to do until after you've submitted your application. Anyone? Now, I think a big reason for that is in the sections of the BMAT. There are three sections in the BMAT. The first is an aptitude test, kind of like the UK CAT. And section two is called <laughs> Scientific Knowledge and Application. Claims to test GCSE level science and maths. The last section is an essay writing task that includes brief questions based on topics of general, medical, veterinary, 
and scientific interest. Now I didn't give the BMAT, so I don't have any advice for people that might want to give it, but I've put together some links that might be helpful for you down below. Lastly, it's important to know that some universities don't use any of the two entrance exams and assess you purely based on your grades and personal statement. It's therefore wise to assume that such universities may have slightly higher grade requirements than those which have entrance tests. But then again, all medical schools are going to have like high entry requirements, high grade requirements. Just, you got to do well. No two ways about it. Thanks for watching and I hope I could help you understand the process a little better. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me below and I'll try and help you. Alternatively, you can use the student room. It's a great forum and the people there are really helpful. They will help you with your questions. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about the rather important stage of writing a personal statement and choosing the universities. So click here, somewhere, wherever, to uh, watch that video, and good luck!